in Matney, South Carolina at McLeod Farms talking today with Spencer McLeod about an unusual winter crop. Spencer, I know that you can grow collard greens in the winter and turnips. What are you doing growing strawberries? Well, we actually started this three years ago. We're growing strawberries in the winter time. We built these tunnel houses for this purpose. Well, what is a tunnel house? Is this different from a greenhouse? This is kind of a skeleton form of a greenhouse. Um, it's simply just plastic uh, pulled over some uh, metal posts. Uh, it's not quite as stout as a greenhouse, but uh, it does the job. Now, I am kind of confused because I thought that strawberries came in in the springtime. How can you get them to be producing fruit in the winter? Is this a different variety? Yes, ma'am. This is actually a day neutral uh, variety. And what that means is the strawberry doesn't need a certain amount of hours of daylight to produce flowers. It actually produces flowers regardless of how long the day is. Uh, this particular variety that we're in now is Radiance and we also have Albions and they are day neutral berries. It looks like this is typical to what I'd see on an outdoor strawberry though. Describe how you plant it and the preparations for that. Right. Right here we're growing in a plastic culture which is a raised bed that's tarped and that helps with weeds and, and uh, isolates the plant. We also can fertilize through our irrigation system underneath this plastic. Um, so it's very similar to what we do outside for our spring berries. Now, do you get some advantages by having the berries on the ground when the temperatures do get cold? Absolutely. Um, last year we actually experimented with some tables um, and they do work in some applications, but for us we found that the ground um, allowed the plant to stay a lot warmer on those very cold nights. Uh, we actually use a, a cloth to cover them to use the ground as a heater and we see a, a better yield and production um, in that type of system in the ground versus growing on a, a platform. Spencer, some people might think that all you have to do is put these in here and then just turn the water and irrigation on, but there's a lot of just day-to-day things because right now it's a chilly day outside but in here we're getting pretty warm so do you have to open things and raise plastic and close plastic tell me some of the problems and some of the challenges you have to meet um, typically uh, if we kept the doors closed throughout the day it would become really hot in here it'd be at 90 100 degrees even if it was 45 or 50 degrees outside uh, this is uh, uh, like a greenhouse when the sun's shining it gets really hot and humid um, and in those types of, of, of elements, we, we start to see pressures of disease. Um, and to eliminate that, we open every day, uh, especially when we know it's going to be sunny, uh, to let a, a breeze come in here and kind of let the, the water evacuate. And just like with your outdoor crops, so if it's going to be real cold, do you have to sometimes pull up the covers? That's right. We're trying to keep the flowers from freezing. The moment that we have an event where it gets below 31 degrees, 32 degrees in here, we've actually killed the flower and we won't have uh, a berry for another 30 to 45 days till we make a flower. So what we're trying to do in this, in this house is keep it warm enough to where the flowers stay alive and we can keep picking, picking berries. You know, we talk a lot about pollinators and how important they are. And of course, a lot of the crops, the wonderful squash and pumpkins and things require that. Do you have, I, but it's kind of hard to think of bees running up and down in these long houses. Right. What about a strawberry? How does it get pollinated? Strawberries are self-pollinating. Oh. They, they can use uh, assistance from bees or wind. Um, typically though, you don't have to put bees out in a field to get poll good pollination. Because we are in a tunnel house, we do have limited wind. Um, we haven't noticed too much of pollination issues. Last year we, we had a few and we tried some bees, um, but generally speaking, strawberries don't need uh, an external third party uh, pollinator. So that is another reason it lends itself well to this kind of production. That's right. Spencer, you know, I'm not so sure what a strawberry that grows in the winter would taste like. How's the flavor? Excellent. When we, when we started this three years ago, um, you would typically think that a winter berry off season would be bland or uh, fleshy, it wouldn't be sweet, but we, we actually harvested them the week after Christmas and we ate some of the best berries we've ever had in our lives. Uh, the Albion is a great, a great berry, it's very sweet, um, and it's very unusual to think that a, a, a December berry, a winter berry would be so uh, tasty. Spencer, it's been fun to learn about winter strawberries with you. And if people want to know more about all the things that are going on at McLeod Farms, what's the best way to do that? You can catch us on Facebook. Uh, we have a pretty active Facebook page that gives you some updates of what's going on on the farm, what's coming off, what we're growing, um, and also our website. We have some videos that you can 
see some of our production and, and how we do things. Well, thank you for what you're doing for South Carolina agriculture. Thank you for having us.